<laughs> it's always a, a mystery if you're on. But hey, everyone, tell everyone we're here. I am with student Dr. Christina Light, D3 at UCLA School of Dentistry. Thank you so much for being here early Sunday morning. And um, yeah, let's just see, is everybody here? Just We're definitely going to have a good opportunity to ask questions and not just about the SHEP program, but about dental school, your journey, some tips you can share with our, our students, aspiring dentists. So okay. welcome, welcome. Yeah, so Christina Light, let me just explain. Um, you are a SHEP ambassador because you are an alumna. You went through the program in 2016. Um, for those who don't know what that is, is the Summer Health Professions Education Program. And she's gonna go into detail more of what that entails and how great of an opportunity it is. You got your BS at Loyola Marymount in 2018 in biochemistry. So super yes. smart there. <laughs> that was not my major. <laughs> That's like really hard. Honestly, and I'm then so um, that course. I have that degree. So. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be proud of that. <laughs> you'd be proud of that. And as we mentioned, she is a third year dental student at UCLA School of Dentistry. I understand you're going to be going to residency or applying. Oh, wait, wait. And most importantly, too, you're a president of SNDA. So you are already a leader in the profession of dentistry. So we're so excited and anxious for you to start practicing and, and sharing all your knowledge and passions with all of us and um, for, for our patients and community at Y. So welcome, welcome, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me, I'm excited to be here. Always happy to talk about um, SHIPEP, sorry, it was <laughs> SMDEP when I was in it. Um, uh -huh. They changed the name to SHIPEP, I think the year after I did it. What, what um, did it stand for before that? SMDEP was Summer Medical Education, uh, wait, <laughs> Summer Medical and Dental Education Program. So okay, well that's what I was wondering because yeah. yeah. They yeah, so now they're encompassing that, all health. Right, to be more, yeah, inclusive, like nursing and um, other, you know, pre-health majors, because it is expansive. You know? It's not just medicine and dentistry. So. Yeah, well, how did you learn about the program and, and what, um, you know, ignited you to go ahead and apply? Right, so I found out about it, like, maybe a week before the application closed. Um, <laughs> And I was really hesitant to apply because I'm like, okay, I know you have to have two letters of rec. And I just, I didn't think I was in a position, like a good position to ask anybody for a letter at the time. But I'm like, you know what? You better find somebody like quick. Um, so I asked, I ended up asking like one of my employers at the time and um, a professor that I had a good relationship with. Um, and I was like, you know, it's doing a week. Um, it doesn't have to be the most extravagant, but yeah. you know, write something, you know, on my behalf, that would be great. Um, I, I found out about it from a fellow classmate, um, Exeta. Her, uh, her major was also biochemistry. We were like one of two black women in the mm -hmm. entire major um, at LMU. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she was just telling me about this summer program that she was doing. Um, at the time, I think I would consider myself pre-med. Um, so she was just letting all like the pre-med uh, people know. And um, this was, I'm sorry, this was your sophomore year? This was my sophomore year. Yes. This okay, was undergrad. The of, yeah. The and it's geared for freshman, sophomore year. Yes. It is okay. only for summer of freshman and sophomore year. So this okay. is my last eligible year. So okay. I was like, okay, let me just go ahead and try. <laughs> and um, yeah, I remember I was like, uh, waiting to find out you know which site that i got into i had i don't know if it still works the same way but you rank three um sites that you would like to go to so i um i think i ranked howard as first um because i had been living in la for so long and i, like, <laughs> I want to see something different yeah. and i hadn't had the opportunity to go to an hbcu before so i was like well maybe you know i can get a little snippet you know during the summer um, so yeah, I, I listed Howard, Columbia, and UCLA. UCLA okay. was my last rank. <laughs> and I was like, can you only do three? You can only uh, do three. Yeah. And then can you do just to see which one you get in if you don't know, like one medical and then one dental? No. So okay. your application um, is either 
categorized as pre-med or pre-dental at the time for me. Um, I'm sure now they have, you know, pre-med, pre-dental, pre-nursing. <laughs> I'm not sure if they make you distinguish yourself at all. Um, but I did find out after starting the program that there wasn't any real like uh, delineation between the two. Like it was very just to see what you're interested in so we can assign you a, an advisor. And once you got in, if you found out that you were interested in something else, it was very easy to explore that option as well. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. great. The pre and then I should also program. highlight in case people are listening and, and people share tag a high school senior, you know, um, so because they'll be entering their summer freshman or yeah. Okay. Yes. And then also if you heard everybody that you said you did this in a week before the deadline, because yeah. I know some people are going to just say, oh, it's due next week. It's due on the 5th and they're not going to try, but it is possible to get it done. No, it's very, very possible. <laughs> and um, I mean, obviously any application that comes out, it's nice to get it done early, but this is not like a rolling admissions type thing. Like they, they just decide whether you get in or not after that deadline. So just okay. try your best, honestly. Um, brag about yourself in your application. Talk about what, uh, in your personal statement, talk about why you know you'd be a good um, health provider and what kind of pushed you into this field um, and you don't have to be completely certain whether or not you want to do it of course like mm, you know you're, you're an undergrad you're super young and I'm still young and um, <laughs> it's okay to like explore options and you can mm -hmm. mention that too you know that that is great advice because a lot of people are, are kind of tethering between dentistry and medicine you know they want to be a doctor but you're like oh really consider dentistry that's the thing because it seems like so many college counselors aren't even discussing it. yeah no. up that's why i we're didn't here. know that dentistry was an option at all um i actually didn't consider dentistry until i applied to the program when yeah. they asked me to check a box. Whoa, that's powerful, really. Yeah, really. Um, I, I uh, didn't have like uh, dental insurance growing up, so I didn't go to the dentist a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I never really knew like the possibility of mm -hmm. like a career in dentistry. Um, I found out about it very late. I ended up needing my wisdom teeth extracted when I was like 17 or something, met a black oral surgeon, and he was like, have you ever thought about dentistry? And I was like, no. And then I never like, <laughs> never thought about it again. And then that box popped up and I was like, you know what? Let's see, like, he, sure. Yeah, he planted the seed, he planted the seed. That's what we, we preach around here is like, start early, plant the seed. Because you're right, how are you gonna see anyone who looks like you when there's only 3.8% black dentists yeah, in the nation? Right. Yeah, <laughs> so the you, chances how, are rare. Yeah, I always like to say, like, how do you be in pursuit of a goal that you don't even know exists? Mm -hmm. Like, I I didn't know that dentistry was an option. It is extremely fulfilling. Everything that he told me was pretty much rings true now. I mm -hmm. love um, I love dentistry, honestly. So, oh, yeah. that's great. And we're glad that you applied to this program so that you are forced to check a box <laughs> and now we're sitting here and you're about to be a dentist in another year. So guys, if you're just kind of joining in live, uh, Christina Light is a third year dental student at UCLA. She is talking to us about the SHIPEP. I was calling it SHIP, so it's SHIPEP. <laughs> yeah, SHIPEP. Ooh, it's such a unique name, but it stands <laughs> for Summer Health Professions Education Program. So even if it's not your year this year, I want you guys to know about this early on. Parents, grandparents, teachers, pediatricians, dentists, of course, share this with your students, your, your children, your nieces, your nephews, and grandchildren. Yeah, there are sites it. all around the country. Um, so don't think that it's like exclusive to West Coast. Um, I know I go to UCLA and I went to the UCLA site um, for my program, but there are schools all around the country that host this program. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to uh, be virtual again this year. Yeah, so honestly, the site doesn't matter at all. Oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so you should just apply. So tell us about the program as far as, so, I don't know if you remember the application fee. Is it pretty reasonable? Um, as far as I remember, there was no no fee. Okay, so you, 
Yeah, I, I don't believe like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't believe there was a fee. Um, no, I'm I'm like 99% <laughs> certain. Um, it's geared towards underrepresented minorities. Um, so you know, generally, I think they, you know, don't want to charge us anything. Mm -hmm. Apply. And then, yeah, and so when you get there, I mean, would transportation be on out of pocket on your own, or is that okay? So thank you for you. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, so last year they started doing virtual. I'm pretty sure they're going to maintain the virtual thing this year, but um, for next year, hopefully it's back in person. What they do is they set you up with housing. They, mm -hmm. yeah, um, they house you, they give you a stipend, um, they give you breakfast and dinner. Dinner. I think I was responsible for lunch. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. And that was pretty much what your stipend goes towards and you you have plenty of stipend money for lunch and to like explore the city do what you want um uh yeah housing was free uh mm -hmm. they basically set us up in some undergrad dorms at ucla mm -hmm. and um we would walk to the dental school um classes were at the like underground the dental school slash med school here uh -huh. um so we would just walk like a mile every morning from our dorms and yeah some people would split an uber if they were like running late <laughs> or something like that but yeah they handled transportation that for the is most great. Part and um how many weeks is the program is the whole summer or four weeks it is six weeks six it's weeks. six weeks mm -hmm. yeah and you get two stipends uh one during the third week and one during the last week Okay. Um, I don't remember how much, but it was like a couple hundred dollars each time or something like that. Yeah. Um, and That's, yeah, you get a lot of information and education in six weeks. So you kind of had a yeah. leg up. Well, first I wanted to also highlight that it's great practice just on the application process for you to have to put your thoughts down and yep. express your reasoning for wanting to go into this field because you're going to have to do that on the dental school application. It's good for you to kind of start practicing that that narrative in your in your mind when you're interviewing. I think it's just such a great preparatory skill in itself. It is. It is. Yeah. And then when you're there, I'm sure you get a leg up on all your classmates on dental anatomy, the equipment, the instruments, vocabulary, yeah. terminology. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. So a lot of our classes were joint. They were very, um, it was it was public health centered. So mm -hmm. it was more like formulating uh, projects to help, you know, the surrounding LA community and understanding like the impact of oral health and, you know, um, your entire health um, mm -hmm. and just making connections between like the importance of, you know, promoting oral health around um, our community. I would say that I think they do more dental specific workshops now. Um, the biggest thing that I remember is that the pre-dental students got to go to a health fair um, in Watts and they got to apply like topical and do mm -hmm. um, some small examinations. You know, <laughs> so topical like, fluoride? I'm yeah. sorry? You said topical fluoride? Yes, topical fluoride, topical fluoride yes. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, just like yeah. interacting with the community more so, feeling what it's like to be a provider. Um, but yeah, we had weekly quizzes. We had PBL. Um, what, is, what is that again? Something based learning. Um, oh, problem, problem, problem based. based yeah, <laughs> problem based. Yeah, problem based learning. Um, so yeah, we would just do sessions of those. And yeah, yeah. It, was, it was cool. It was very cool. And, and you are set up with an advisor, right? So Dr. Hulett. Yes. Who, you know, we love Dr. Hulett. He's on our board of diversity and dentistry mentorships. And he's responsible for, I don't know how many <laughs> dentists who are out I, there now. I don't program. either. Um, yes. <laughs> he's definitely responsible for me. So Aww. yeah. Um, yeah, Dr. Hulett has been the greatest advisor, honestly. Um, we met during the program and uh i was very like nervous i guess um to show him like my grades and stuff like that um i had a really hard time transitioning to undergrad if i'm being mm -hmm. honest um 
just I had came from Mississippi it was a very different environment just getting mm -hmm. to LA and you know um yeah and bio and biochem is not easy so <laughs> I I don't think I fully understood how to study for myself um yeah I would I'm say that honestly that. you guys can major in anything you can literally learn anything as long as you learn how to learn for you um nothing is impossible to remember or to understand uh, mm -hmm. there's so many resources out there right now i just encourage you to find like youtube videos that connect with you um just different things but so much, out, so much out there now yeah but um you can literally learn anything so it's never too late to turn your grades around um and that's exactly what i did you know oh that's was, great yeah he was basically like you know you're you're not in the worst position <laughs> um and he was just very positive the whole time and just having that positivity while you're you know finishing up school is really important because it, it is it's a mental you know it's, oh it is i mean and yeah, you know hard. already struggling with probably you know imposter syndrome and dealing mm -hmm. with microaggressions and all those things to think that you know it's nice to have someone who helps kind of believe in you to kind of believe in yourself even more yeah and i'm sure not only with your advisor with dr hula but you were Kind of, could you interact with any of the other dental students and get their feedback on this, you know, just their experience there and other yeah. faculty? Yeah, so um, I also had an RA um, and I was actually an RA two years uh -huh. ago for the same program, mm -hmm. um, which is so cool to come like literally full circle. Yes. Um, but back. yeah, my, I it already. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So yeah, my <laughs> RA um, at the time was a I think he was a second year dental student. Um, and I was just asking him, you know, like, what's the real, real, like, what, what is it really like to go to school here, especially as a black person, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, we just have a very different experience. And just to meet somebody way before I applied, way before I went to the school, um, giving me advice on, you know, how to prepare for the DAT. And yeah, my RA ended up becoming my mentor, like, completely oh. and um i'm happy that i got the opportunity to mentor other you know pre-dental students when i was in ra um oh, that's just great. passing it on honestly yeah it's so true it, you know and with mentorship and and to see that you're already doing it you don't have to be i guess already have met that destination you're a mentor oh. to anyone who's coming up behind you wherever path or a place they are in that journey so, and sometimes when that, that distance is a little bit closer, it's, it's even a little bit more helpful. Like I can give people kind of big broad picture of what life can be, but just having someone could say, oh no, specifically when you're studying for the DAT, make sure you look at this, you know, curriculum or this, this program, um, I think is so great. Yeah, because I mean, even at this point, like I, I kind of remember how I studied for the DAT, but it's a little, yeah. a little removed. Um, but yeah, just having somebody who's, you know, closer in, um, in that like path is definitely yeah. helpful. Their memory is fresh on exactly what needs to happen, you know, mm -hmm. to, to help you be successful. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Would you, let me see if there's any questions. I don't think there's any guys, if you're around and have questions put them in and we'll take a look so she can address it um what i was going to ask uh, so i know it's not necessarily a pipeline to that school but it would you could say that it is very helpful right do you feel oh, there's yeah. an advantage when you're applying i would i would say there's um definitely some advantage right like like I knew Dr. Hewlett, um, that's a faculty member at the school. I knew students at the school. I was able to write that in my supplements, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I talked a lot about SNDEP or uh, SHIPEP in my uh, supplement for UCLA. I was basically like, listen, mm -hmm. I know my grades are not the best at the beginning, um, but like uh, I had a really good upward curve, which is important too. Um, you guys can definitely talk about that if you're starting in a, you know, lower GPA, um, just try really, really hard during your like third year and your fourth year, just so they can see, you know, that maybe it was an issue of being adjusted, maybe it was an anxiety issue, maybe it was, it could be a bunch of different things, but to show that you can overcome something is more important than being perfect. 
um yeah being perfect is not the end all be all for no. sure no. although no. applying to ucla it feels like that right because yeah. <laughs> their stats are so high and my class yeah. average is so high and everybody's so smart um and <laughs> yeah uh so it can be intimidating but mm -hmm. yeah no i would say it definitely definitely helped um just to be able to say you know ucla already feels like home to me um mm -hmm. i think yeah i think helped for sure oh that's that's so 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 helpful for students just to know um i just think that it's not shared enough and people are not aware of these opportunities um, i agree yeah uh, because you could be thinking about it in high school, you know, or we're always, I know as a mom, I'm looking for summer camps or whatnot for the kids. And, you know, I have a junior now. She, no one wants to go to dentistry so far, but she wants to go to vet school. <laughs> but cool. she'll be a senior. So I need to look around and see, oh, I wonder, see, I don't even know. I wonder, the ship up, do veterinary medicine? See, look, I'm learning something right now. I should probably research that <laughs> if we go. Health professionals for that. I don't you know. <laughs> but if there's not, there might be something like that for, for vet students or pre-vet. I'm sure there has to be. Yeah. Like at, at this point, I feel like there's a program for anything that anyone wants yeah. to do. And um, that's the thing is it's yeah. just not knowing, just trying to share resources. So um, you know, if there's other students or parents that have questions that you know we we don't get them. They don't see this recording now. We'll have it saved on the Facebook group and we'll upload it. YouTube, but that is this is what the group is for. So if things come up in questions, we can put it in the the feed and get answers and and share it, share amongst our our colleagues and our friends to help yeah. the next generation, right? <laughs> yeah, starting young is very early, uh, very important. Starting early is very important. Yeah. Um, I did a summer health program when I was in Mississippi, actually in high school. Mm -hmm. And I think just getting used to filling your summer with something that, you know, is going to benefit you later in life and um, going towards your career, or at least trying to get a better understanding of where you may want to go in your career is very mm -hmm. important. Um, I did something called um, SLAM, which is uh, summer learning. Uh, no, it's like science language arts and math yes oh, um and it was through the jackson heart study i'm not sure if they still do it but this is for anybody who might live in mississippi i don't know oh good, um, good. Yeah. yeah and you can do that every year every summer um while you're in high school so you can i did oh, it this summer i'm sorry that's, that's fantastic yeah so it's basically like they groom you from like 13 to 17. like i'm pretty sure yeah, I did it the summer after eighth grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade, I believe. Um, and it, it, yeah, it's just very like, it, it's great. It's great to be around um, other, you know, uh, professionals, especially professionals of color who clearly care about your well being and uh, mm -hmm. seeing you succeed specifically. Yeah. Oh, I bet, I bet you're probably still in touch with some of your friends <laughs> from that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, right? I mean, and I love how they followed you all those years. That's probably a great way for them to measure the success that if we're making a difference with these kind of grassroots efforts of, you know, just really exposing, you know, students from underrepresented backgrounds to, to dentistry and medicine. And um, yeah, so I love that. I, I love that you're sharing all this information and and I'm glad you're having a, a great experience at UCLA. I know it's been a little bit challenging here during COVID. What's changed so far? I mean, and you're this is your clinic year. <laughs> yeah, this is my like, this is the year that I'm not supposed to be at home. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little different, but I just got off a rotation last week, actually. Um, we do something called CBCE, which is mm -hmm. uh, clinical based, uh, community based clinical education. Oh, wow. I believe. Um, basically, it's a program that's in place that has you uh, rotate around different sites in LA, different um, clinics. Mm -hmm. So I just worked at Venice Family Clinic for the past three weeks, and it was really cool getting some exposure outside of like the tip my typical Westwood patient pool, um, yeah. which is also diverse in itself. Um, 
but it was a little different working in Venice for sure. Uh, I got a lot of requirements done, so that's cool. <laughs> and I have never done so many restorative uh, procedures in my life yet. So <laughs> that was cool. You know, I got to knock out some crowns and so. Oh, good. Not- no, great, 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 great. Yeah, because you gotta have those requirements to graduate. You gotta yeah. get them somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, practicing like this is going to stay around for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we have to be, you know, gowned up, gloved up, face shields <laughs> over N95s. Um, All that. Yeah. Working in a sauna. <laughs> yeah. It, it gets warm. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's, it, it hasn't been terrible, honestly. Like all my, all my lecture classes are on Zoom mm-hmm. and um, we're at 50% capacity in the clinic. So they've extended some like um, open times. Like um, we usually only have night clinic on Tuesdays. Now we have night clinic on Tuesdays and Thursdays to accommodate mm-hmm. for the 50% capacity. Um, so I, I can pretty much get patients in if I still need. It's a little more difficult because fourth years have priority, but um, in general, yeah, no, everything's okay. Okay, I hope it'll be better by next year too. <laughs> yeah, by like fall. I know. Well, great, great, great. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. Let's just make sure there was any anybody come up on the feed yet. Um, but yeah, like I said, you guys can put questions in later if you're missed this while it was live but yeah, I know I'd be happy to answer questions uh-huh. while we're, honestly um and I'll put my like email um underneath one of uh, the videos okay that's, that's very yeah. generous of you yeah. yes I appreciate that and um you know we wish you all the best great success you're yeah. already making me proud and all of us proud I appreciate that <laughs> and it- strong. Thank you for being a mentor. Thank you for shining your light and just helping others to believe because you are showing them that it is possible. So can't wait to to have you out in the field for real. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. No, it's been my pleasure. Thanks. And you guys have a great one. Keep working hard and get the rest you need to. All right. You take care. You too. Bye. Bye.